Professor Nagausa. Professor. Hi, good morning. Yeah, hi, hi, hi Nato. I'm Yao Hui. Good morning. Thank you very much for staying late. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, almost uh, 10 o'clock here. So, not so late. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we arrange you, arrange you as a co host. So, mm. you can feel free to share a screen. Just okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's also possible we can do a the 12 hour switch so you can be in the morning. But I don't know which one is better. So, <laughs> yeah, can you show my slides? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, it, it works well. Yeah. Uh, laser pointer. Yeah, can you see the laser pointer? Yes, yes. Okay, very good. Yeah, yeah perfect. So I assume the approximately one hour. Is that okay? Uh, yes, actually it, it can go to 90 minutes if you want. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> it, can, it can be short, it can be long, it doesn't really Yeah, 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 you, you can decide. So we do not have a hard limit on that. I see. So very flexible. Yeah, 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 it's very flexible. Mm. Professor Petrilli usually said whenever you speak, even if you speak some uh, well-known topic, you introduce something new. Mm -hmm. so, so we're looking forward to your talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, because, but, but actually, today's talk contains a lot of old stuff also. <laughs> well, that's, that's Almost uh, 35 years ago. Probably you were not born yet. 35 years ago. Yes, yeah, so it's, it could, it's good for many uh, young people. <laughs> I see. It's new to them. It's also good for me, I think. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, now I'm feeling uh, I'm old enough. <laughs> Since we have a, a lot of time, so you don't have to rush, just take your time. Okay, thank you.
Hello, Dieter. <laughs> Haven't seen you for a while. You're muted. <clears throat> I've seen you on the program. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. Give Hi, it a oh, hey, Naoto, how are you? Fine, fine, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry to shift the time. Oh, no, it's, uh, mm. it's, it's yeah. better that you are awake. That's important. But uh, not as, I'm afraid not as many people are getting up as usual. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> But it sounds, uh, sounds like it will be very interesting. For us, it's a very good time. Hi, Naoto. Hi, good morning. Hello. So. It's almost time. Do, do we okay, Naoto. So, so you're ready. We, we were waiting for a few minutes. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I'm saying we were waiting for another a few oh. minutes because okay. the people were come late. That, that's the tradition here. <laughs> Sorry for that. <clears throat> Hi, Zubia. I, I can see you. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, Nato. Thank uh, you for speaking. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very long term program. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, I think, you know, thanks to Jubin and Yahoo, you've done a lot of work. It's uh, turned out quite well. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I think uh, Professor Nagausa is the 18 speakers on the series so far. I see. Yeah, maybe we can start. So, Nata, are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, okay. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, and good afternoon, and good night. So, thanks for coming to today's talk at a very early time. Uh, so, today, today, it's our great honor to have Professor Nata Nagosa as our speaker for the seminar of HTC Superconductor. Uh, Professor Nagosa is, is now at the University of Tokyo. Uh, he is famous for his work uh, in strongly correlated system, uh, for example, in HTC Cooperates. But uh, recently, he also works uh, a lot on spintronics and uh, also on optics. Uh, so today, Nato will tell us about uh, applied physics of HTC Cooperates. Uh, thanks, Nato. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So let me start by thanking the organizers for giving me this very special opportunity. Yeah, I'm very happy to be invited. So my name is Naoto Nagausa uh, from the RICAM Center for Emergent Matter Science and also the Department of Applied Physics, uh, University of Tokyo. Okay, so let me start by giving some personal CV. So actually I, I got a doctor degree uh, in the year of 1986. So as you may know, so this is a very special year of high TC. So uh, the discovery of uh, cuprates was uh, in this year. So then my scientific career started uh, with uh, uh, high TC fevers. 
And then slightly after this discovery, uh, I have a very good opportunity to uh, join the uh, Patrick Lee's group at MIT uh, during the year of uh, 88 to 90. So after that, I came back to Tokyo and uh, I'm now at the U Tokyo and uh, uh, Riken. So actually uh, all the uh, works uh, after coming back to Japan is somehow originated from Fatai Lang at MIT. So that's, that is a message I want to convey in this talk. So at that time, uh, the high TC problem was the most important and uh, everybody was so excited. And this is a schematic phase diagram. So as you know, uh, at the underdoped, uh, undoped case, you have a uh, anti-ferromagnetic uh, states, long range order states, and then with the doping uh, concentration X, so some superconductivity evolves. And then this shows a very high TC. But uh, in addition to this superconducting state, there are very mysterious shield gap state and also the Nerunst uh, regions. And even uh, in this normal metal regions, the uh, physical properties are very anomalous. So this one interpretation of this phenomena in terms of the spinons and the uh, horons. So then uh, this is a typical phase diagram uh, based on the RBB picture of P.W. Anderson. So the physics of this cube plate is believed to be described by the, uh, this uh, square lattice uh, tight binding uh, Hamiltonian <clears throat> uh, with a kappa site occupying uh, this uh, corner of uh, uh, square lattice. And then uh, in this bond positions, you have uh, oxygen, right? So <clears throat> actually once you dope holes, then uh, this uh, vacancy can travel. Uh, and then all the other sides, you have a magnetic moment of uh, spin one half. So the uh, RBB picture of uh, P.W. Anderson is the following. So uh, this uh, uh, spins uh, is uh, uh, influenced by the uh, exchange interaction, anti-ferromagnetic exchange interaction uh, between the neighboring spins, then they tends to form the singlet. So these are liquid of the singlet. Uh, once this anti-ferromagnetic state is destroyed by the doping, right? And then if you take out one electron uh, from the uh, system, and then uh, this uh, singlet will uh, lose the pair, and then uh, there remains some isolated spin one half. So this uh, doped uh, hole is called a horon, and this uh, isolated spin one half is called a spinon. So uh, this is a basic picture of the doped anti-ferromagnet uh, in this RBB picture. So actually we tackle this problem uh, based on the mean fuse uh, solution of uh, Baskaran Zo Anderson. And then we take into account the so-called gauge fluctuation. So uh, this uh, spin charge separation can be uh, described by the Slay boson uh, formalism where this electron operator is written in terms of a fermion operator and the boson operator. And this uh, fermion is corresponding to uh, spinon and the B corresponds to the uh, horons, right? And then uh, for each side, there are three possibilities, uh, vacancy or spin up and spin down. So these are three uh, possibilities uh, are exhausted for each side. Uh, that means the W occupancy is excluded uh, in this formalism. Then <clears throat> uh, this uh, singlet formation can be given in terms of uh, uh, this order parameter, chi ij, uh, which is basically the uh, fermion hopping uh, between side i and side j. So the phase of this chi ij is uh, nothing but the gauge field. Uh, associated with uh, uh, RBB order parameters. So actually this uh, uh, fluctuation of this gauge field can scatter the bosons and fermions and also electrons because the electron is a composite particles of uh, uh, bosons and fermions. So it is given by this uh, path integral uh, diagram. And the boson case is uh, most extended in real space and this uh, fluctuation of the flux, gauge flux, will scatter uh, the bosons. 
which uh, we pro proposed to lead to the T linear resistivity at the time. So uh, later, uh, this uh, gauge view fluctuation uh, is turned into the uh, so called spin chirality. So if you consider the product of these chi operators uh, surrounding the uh, triangle one, two, three, then this P one, two, three imaginary part is nothing but uh, S1 dot S2 cross S3 for each spin side. Then uh, this uh, uh, solid angle uh, subtended by the uh, three spins correspond to the phase of uh, order parameter chi ij and the uh, uh, gauge field. So this uh, gauge field is not fixed object and uh, it has a propagator uh, given by this combination. And omega is the frequency and Q is the momentum. And chi D is uh, the magnetic susceptibility and, and uh, chi, uh, sigma Q is the uh, momentum of the uh, fermion systems. So uh, based on this formalism, you can do some perturbative analysis of the gauge field fluctuation in terms of the uh, Feynman diagram. So the message here is that this uh, gauge field is related to the uh, angle uh, made by the spin, right? So the meaning is that you need a non-collinear spin structure. Uh, once the spins are parallel or anti-parallel, so this product uh, becomes zero. So then the non-collinear uh, spin is the uh, essence uh, for the <clears throat> uh, high TC cuprates. That was a uh, uh, starting point. And another uh, problem uh, we consider is a confinement uh, problem of the gauge field. Uh, because in the original model, uh, you have a compact QED in two plus one D. So this is imaginary time and uh, this is a real space, right? And then <clears throat> this uh, lattice QED uh, can be formulated in the continuum approximation uh, in terms of the uh, uh, monopole uh, excitations. So the monopole is a sort of a, a tunneling phenomena uh, between the uh, flux. So if you cut the uh, imaginary time, uh, equal, uh, equal imaginary time frame here and here, so there is a, a change of the uh, total gauge flux. Then the tunneling events of the flux leads to the uh, confinement of uh, uh, gauge field. So <clears throat> this uh, uh, topological nature was already there in the theory of high TC. And later uh, we talked about the SU2 uh, gauge field uh, in the particle hole space. So this uh, original formulation was U1, but now we have uh, SU2 uh, gauge uh, formulation. So these are the uh, summary of what I learned from uh, uh, Patrick and uh, people in MIT. So here is my very personal view for the history of uh, 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 condensed matter physics, right? So ITC was discovered in uh, middle of uh, uh, 80s, but uh, also during the 80s, we have a uh, uh, quantum hole uh, physics uh, discovered. So these are two big discovery uh, leads to the uh, developments. So the uh, high TC is of course uh, correlation physics, right? Electron correlation. And the quantum hole physics leads to the topology and the geometry of the quantum state. And uh, these two streams are now merging together. And uh, uh, this is a, a, a picture for the uh, development of this uh, field. And uh, for uh, coming from this quantum physics, uh, uh, this uh, topological uh, current and the very phase play a very important role. And uh, uh, we did some work related to the uh, numerous hole effect and the spin hole effect. And uh, this leads to the uh, discovery of a topological insulator, as uh, you might know. And uh, uh, this uh, correlation physics uh, leads to the spin liquid and uh, uh, orbital physics and the quantum simulator. And uh, from the technological viewpoint, this leads to the nano uh, physics and nano devices. So we hope this uh, development will lead to the uh, very bright future, uh, namely the dissipation rate function and room temperature superconductor, quantum information technology and uh, uh, beyond Moore.
uh, electronics. So today, uh, I, of course, I cannot cover all these de developments. Then let me focus on the rather uh, narrow uh, field of uh, uh, non-collinear magnets. Because as I mentioned, in high TC cuprates, so this uh, uh, spin fluctuation, which produce uh, non-collinear uh, spin structure is quite important. So then I got interested in this non-collinear magnets. So these are non-collinear spins uh, due to uh, strong electron correlation. So let me explain. Uh, this is a ferromagnetic state and all the spins are pointing uh, in the same direction. In the case of anti-ferromagnet, uh, all the spins are alternating, right? But uh, uh, both of these two cases, your spins are parallel or anti-parallel. Uh, we call it the collinear, right? It's uh, along the uh, single line. But uh, once for the generic periodicity, so if you keep the collinear structure, then you need to modulate the amplitude of the spin like that. But uh, this costs uh, uh, Coulomb uh, energy. So the reason is that uh, the strong correlation try to keep the uh, maximum length of the spins, right? And then in order to keep the length of the spins, and then you need to uh, rotate the spin in this way. So this is so-called a spiral or a helical structure. And then uh, necessarily you have a non-collinear uh, spin structure. So from the uh, viewpoint of the uh, physics, uh, mathematics, so the target space of uh, this uh, spin is uh, uh, becomes the S2. So this is a surface of the three-dimensional sphere, uh, not the B3. B3 includes the inside of the sphere. Then in the case of B3, uh, all the spin can be uh, squeezed into the zero uh, point. Then the, all the uh, states become the trivial, uh, continuously uh, connected. But uh, once you have a S2, uh, you have uh, uh, some topological classification of the spin configuration. Then the uh, strong correlation leads to the topological topology of uh, spin uh, textures. So uh, that I think is a very important uh, aspect of a strong correlation. And actually this uh, helical spin was uh, theoretically proposed a long time ago, uh, 1959 for the insulating, uh, motor insulator manganese dioxide by uh, Yoshimori. Okay, so this is a non-collinear uh, spin structure leads to the vector potential, uh, small a. So this is the uh, same vector potential as we discussed for cuprates. The important point here is that uh, once you have a coupling between this conduction electrons and the uh, uh, spin direction, uh, namely once you have a, a strong Huns coupling between the local spin and the conduction electrons, then this uh, hopping amplitude is uh, associated with a phase factor, uh, which is uh, uh, small a. And uh, this uh, coupling constant uh, is, does not include the small factor of uh, velocity over the velocity of light. Uh, velocity uh, of uh, electron V is usually uh, order of magnitude smaller than the velocity of uh, light then uh, usually this uh, vector potential for the uh, Maxwell uh, electromagnetic field is uh, uh, weakly coupled to the electron compared with the uh, uh, scalar potential. But uh, for this uh, spin uh, electromagnetic, so-called emergent electromagnetic field case, uh, you have a rather strong coupling. For example, uh, this uh, strong coupling leads to the uh, very large effective magnetic field, once you have uh, this uh, non-collinear spin structure with a uh, uh, solid angle, then <clears throat> this uh, leads to the uh, huge magnetic flux, small b, uh, which corresponds to the, uh, let's say, uh, 1,000 tesla. Once this uh, spatial uh, scale of uh, spin texture is uh, nanometers. And also uh, you have uh, uh, very fast uh, motions of the spins uh, of a non-collinear configuration. Then the uh, derivative of this small a leads to the very large uh, emergent electric field. 
So the question is, uh, can we use uh, this uh, large electromagnetic field uh, to develop some uh, functions of uh, electrons in uh, solids? So that was the motivation of uh, uh, this study. And actually, a long time ago, uh, we collaborated with uh, uh, experimental people in uh, Tokyo uh, concerning this pyrochlor materials. So these are pyrochlor materials, uh, crystal structure is given here. So if you look at this uh, crystal uh, from 111 direction, then uh, this uh, uh, cross section contains so-called uh, Kagome lattice made from the uh, molybdenum and the uh, neodymium like that. And <clears throat> because of the very strong uh, single spin anisotropy of this neodymium atoms, so this uh, neodymium spins, uh, uh, sorry, molybdenum, uh, neodymium spins are pointing uh, towards or outwards uh, of uh, this uh, tetrahedron, right? So then <clears throat> uh, this neodymium spins are coupled uh, through the exchange interaction with the molybdenum uh, spins. This is a conduction electrons, and this is a localized spins. So uh, this leads to the small uh, tilting, uh, counting of this molybdenum spins, uh, which is uh, uh, moving. And then uh, this leads to the effective uh, solid angle of this molybdenum conduction electrons. Then uh, most naturally, this leads to the uh, flux, gauge flux coming from this spinberry phase. And uh, uh, this one is observed experimentally as a function of a temperature and the magnetic field. And uh, uh, if I uh, translate uh, the tight binding structure uh, to this tilted uh, spin structure, then this uh, Kagome uh, lattice contains the flux phi, phi and minus two phi for the triangular uh, uh, triangular loop and the hexagon loop. So uh, this uh, uh, total uh, flux becomes zero because of the periodicity. But of course, uh, each electron band is uh, feeling this uh, flux negative and positive in the different weight. So this leads to the, some uh, very curvature uh, in the momentum space, then uh, sigma xy will appear. So this scenario applies to these materials and uh, we can uh, explain the uh, temperature and magnetic field uh, dependence of this uh, sigma xy uh, from the <coughs> uh, theoretical uh, viewpoint. So this is a three spin correlation or uh, non coplanar uh, spin structure with a uh, solid angle. But another aspect of this non-collinear spin is a uh, uh, spin current. So uh, namely, uh, this uh, spin orbit interaction uh, is given by uh, the spin current times uh, capital A. So capital A spin is uh, some vector potential for the spin current. It's, uh, it's a tense object and uh, contains the index of uh, direction of the flow in the uh, direction of the spin polarization. And this uh, A spin, A mu, is uh, given by the uh, electric field or a gradient of the uh, scalar potential. So then <clears throat> this leads to the so-called ahan kasha effect. For example, if you have a uh, 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 charge E uh, current, then uh, you have uh, uh, some circulating magnetic field around the uh, current. So uh, this is a usual uh, uh, story, but uh, the dual uh, of this phenomena is the monopole current. Magnetic monopole uh, once uh, moves, then it will lead to the uh, electric field around it, right? But of course, there is no magnetic monopole in the uh, universe at present. And then the spin is nothing but the magnetic dipole. So then you uh, superimpose the uh, cap, uh, QM and minus QM and the uh, uh, spin current, right? So this uh, plus minus uh, uh, shifted combination of uh, uh, this uh, monopole current. So then uh, superimposing uh, this electric field, 
then you have uh, this uh, uh, perpendicular electric field produced. So this means the spin current and the electric field are closely related uh, to each other uh, from uh, uh, this uh, relativistic effect. So then <clears throat> uh, how we can uh, produce uh, spin current? So for that, uh, we can use uh, uh, canonical conduit relationship among the spin component, Sx, Sy, and Sz. So uh, you can define the angle of the spin within this xy uh, plane. Then this are uh, theta and the Sz are uh, canonical conjugate with each other. Uh, in other words, this uh, Sz is a generator of the rotation of our spins within this uh, xy plane. So using this, uh, you can have an analog of a Josephson effect in superconductors. Uh, namely, once you have a uh, uh, tilting of uh, uh, this uh, theta angle or a twist of the theta angle between the two sides, then automatically you create the uh, super spin uh, current, J spin here. So this uh, J spin will produce uh, electric field or uh, electric polarization. So uh, that's a picture uh, we uh, pursue to study the, this uh, uh, cluster model. So if you consider this uh, D orbitals here and there with a tilted spin in the direction of E1 and E2, and then uh, you have a uh, uh, spin orbit interaction and the uh, oxygen orbitals in between. And then you can calculate the polarization coming from the uh, uh, hybridization between the D orbitals and the P orbitals. So what the formula we obtain is uh, given here in the case of a single hole and the two holes. And uh, for both of them, uh, we have a typical uh, form of uh, E12 cross E1 cross E2. So E12 is a unit uh, vector connecting this site one and site two, right? So uh, then this uh, formula uh, gives a very concise and the compact form of the polarization produced by the uh, non collinear uh, spin structure. So uh, this is a, a sort of a, a inverse effect of the jarosinski moria interaction. So the people call it a spin current uh, mechanism of uh, electric uh, spin induced uh, electric polarization. So uh, based on this formula, uh, you can predict the relationship uh, between the spin structure and the polarization. So in this proper screw structure, you don't have any polarization uh, according to this formula. But in the cycloidal case, uh, your polarization is this direction, but the longitudinal conical, you don't have any polarization. But the transverse conical, you have this direction of the polarization. So uh, then the uh, spin texture, spin structure and uh, uh, this uh, uh, polarization is uh, almost one-to-one -one correspondence according to this very uh, simple uh, formula. And actually, this is one example uh, for the proof of this mechanism. Uh, in the case of a Jarosinsk uh, dysprosium manganese oxide, and in this materials, there are uh, two uh, phase transitions. And uh, uh, first, you have uh, this uh, collinear spin structure, and there is no uh, polarization. But uh, for lower temperature, you have a second phase transition, which transforms uh, from collinear to non-collinear cycloidal uh, magnetic structure. And then uh, you have a, a polarization along this direction, which is uh, consistent with uh, this formula. And uh, in addition to this static ground state polarization, uh, you could have uh, uh, magnon excitations. But uh, because the uh, magnetic structure is associated with the polarization, then the magnon is also associated with the polarization fluctuation. So then uh, this uh, excitation, uh, magnon excitation can be excited by the electric field of light, not the magnetic field of light. So then by changing the uh, polarization of light, you can identify uh, which mode 
correspond to the fluctuation of this uh, polarization uh, P, uh, namely the electromagnon of this uh, cycloidal uh, structures. And actually, in the case of uh, uh, this uh, magnetization uh, conical uh, structure, and then the uh, uniform magnetization and the polarization coexist, then this uh, P cross M uh, is uh, roughly speaking correspond to the uh, vector potential for the light. So then <clears throat> uh, this uh, uh, directional dichroism uh, occurs uh, for this uh, multi-ferric materials with both P and M. So depending on the direction of the uh, propagation of light, so the uh, absorption uh, differs uh, uh, like that. So uh, this uh, electromagnon excitation is uh, uh, very hot topics in the field of uh, insulating uh, multi insulator. But now we are interested in the uh, metallic helimagnetic structures. So in that case, uh, in addition to the uh, small b, so small e, namely the emergent electric field becomes uh, uh, relevant to the conduction electrons. So uh, this is a formula for the helical structure, uh, spiral magnetic structure uh, with a uh, uh, wave number capital Q and the phase on degrees of freedom psi and the uniform magnetization perpendicular to the spin rotating plane. So <clears throat> this uh, psi and M uh, canonical conjugate with each other. Namely, M is a, a generator for the rotation of uh, psi. So actually, if I uh, plug in this formula into this small e, and then uh, this uh, small e has a, a, a component which is parallel to the uh, wave number, uh, which is given by this formula. So this uh, capital Q is a, a wave number, and the M is a uniform component. So uh, this actually leads to the uh, capa uh, inductance over this spiral. Namely, uh, if you have uh, AC uh, current uh, applied to this uh, helical magnet, then it will shake up this magnetic structure. Uh, especially it shake up the, uh, this uh, uniform magnetization uh, out of plane magnetic component. Uh, the angle is given by phi. Then the X is a translation of motion of this helix. And this uh, X and uh, uh, phi are canonical conjugate with each other and uh, obey the equation motion. And actually this is a, a typical spin transfer torque mechanism of uh, uh, spin tronics. But uh, usually people are interested in the uh, DC uh, motion uh, translation of motion. But uh, once you consider this AC response of this helix structure, then uh, you have uh, a voltage drop, which is proportional to the uh, derivative of the current, which is, and the coefficient is uh, uh, nothing but uh, inductance capital A. And then this lambda is a uh, uh, wave, wave length of a uh, uh, spiral, and the J int is uh, uh, some constant related to the uh, spin anisotropy out of a plane. And uh, S is a spin magnitude and uh, uh, L is the length of the sample. So this uh, capital L, namely the inductance is uh, inversely proportional to lambda. So if you have a very short pitch uh, helical structure, then you can get a very large inductance. Uh, which is very uh, useful for application. And also uh, this S, uh, sorry, this S is uh, not the spin. This S is a cross section of the sample. So then uh, as you have a very small uh, cross section, the uh, inductance can be uh, bigger. So then the first uh, we need to uh, develop some materials which shows a very short pitch uh, lambda. So that is achieved by these uh, materials, a little bit complicated, but uh, this has an uh, inversion center. And then the uh, jaroszynski moria interaction is irrelevant in these materials. And the helix is uh, given by the RKKY type 
uh, interaction through the conduction electrons. And then the typical uh, spin structure has a, a two nanometer scale. And uh, actually, I will be back to this topological uh, Hall effect later, where uh, this uh, scamion lattice uh, phase, that phase is uh, identified. But uh, we are interested in this uh, helix and uh, uh, this uh, transverse conical state. So last October, uh, we uh, published a paper in Nature uh, where this inductor is uh, due to this quantum mechanical mechanism uh, due to the, uh, this uh, emergent electric field. So as I mentioned, in the conventional uh, inductor, uh, this uh, inductance is uh, simply proportional to the cross section. So then you cannot make it uh, small. But uh, uh, in this uh, uh, helix uh, spin structure, uh, the inductance is uh, inversely proportional to the uh, sample system. And then you can have a very small scale uh, inductor, uh, which could be uh, very useful in applications. So these are experimental uh, results. And uh, uh, here is a cartoon and here is the experimental result. And uh, uh, as you can see, this uh, helix phase and the transverse conical phase, uh, this uh, imaginary part of the uh, uh, impedance uh, shows uh, uh, large values. And uh, in the uh, normal state, paramagnetic state, uh, you only have a background. And the uh, ferromagnetic state, you don't have. So then uh, this is uh, uh, this inductance is uh, coming from the uh, helix structure. And in the fan state, so this uh, angle of uh, non-collinear spin is reduced. So it's by, that's why the uh, signal is also reduced. So all these are uh, rather consistent with a picture of uh, uh, emergent electric field associated with a non-collinear uh, spin structure. So this is a contour map of uh, uh, this uh, imagery of uh, uh, impedance, namely the inductance uh, in the plane of a magnetic field and the temperature. And uh, it's a uh, proportional to omega, which means uh, given by the time derivative of a uh, current. And uh, importantly, uh, this is uh, inversely proportional to the cross section. So this uh, uh, inductance value is comparable to the best commercial value actually, but the volume of the sample is uh, almost a million times uh, smaller. So then uh, we believe uh, this could be a very useful for the mutualizations of the uh, inductor in uh, electronics. But now uh, we are struggling with uh, frequency and temperature dependence of this inductance. So this equation motion I just uh, presented in the linearized approximation. And this uh, V pin is uh, nothing but uh, a pinning of the phason. So all this electromagnetic response is actually quite similar to the uh, spin density wave uh, phason pinning uh, problem. So then this uh, diagram uh, first proposed by Lee Anderson long time ago applies here also. But uh, this uh, corrective mode uh, uh, between these uh, electron bubbles uh, contains uniform magnetization and the phase on uh, degrees of freedom. So the both uh, uh, components will contribute to the electromagnetic response uh, of these uh, systems. But uh, in any case, uh, this uh, device type uh, relaxation uh, formula uh, is uh, derived and uh, this uh, characteristic uh, frequency is uh, uh, estimated according to the uh, according to this uh, uh, reasonable realistic values of uh, uh, parameters. And then the 10 kilohertz is a typical uh, frequency, which is consistent with the uh, experimental uh, observation. So uh, this is uh, one story <clears throat> for the non-collinear spin structure. So the another story is a uh, uh, scamion. So the scamion is uh, uh, this uh, magnetic uh, textures uh, schematically given here. So uh, it can be defined as a mapping 
from uh, uh, this uh, two-dimensional uh, space to the uh, sphere, uh, surface of the sphere. Namely, uh, uh, pi to S2 is the topological uh, classifications of this uh, mapping. And then uh, this is the integral of the solid angle over the two-dimensional uh, space. So because of this uh, topological number, or called a scamion number, this spin texture is uh, quite stable and a very long life. And that, this scamion structure has been uh, first uh, discovered in the uh, chiral magnet, uh, manganese silicide. So in this uh, chiral magnet, because of the broken inversion symmetry, uh, jarosinski moria type interaction is allowed. So in the continuum approximation, uh, this one is given by the second term. So n dot rotation n. And the D is a jarosinski moria interaction. J is a ferromagnetic exchange interaction. And the size of the uh, this, uh, this uh, jarosinski moria uh, interaction leads to the twist of the spin and the non-collinear spins. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, scale, length scale of this structure is given by uh, J over D ratio. So usually this uh, J over D is uh, very uh, large and then uh, small a is a lattice constant. And this uh, C is uh, typically uh, three nanometer to 100 nanometers and much, much larger uh, than the lattice constant uh, small a. So uh, this leads to the uh, helical structure and the conical structure given by uh, this figure. <clears throat> but uh, there appears some uh, strange uh, phase called the A phase here. And uh, neutron scattering people uh, observe the black spot uh, given here. And uh, they uh, propose that the uh, structure of this A phase is uh, this uh, triangular lattice of uh, scamions uh, schematically given here. And uh, actually around that time, uh, we are uh, considering the two-dimensional model with the uh, jarosinski moria interaction and also uh, the uh, spin anisotropy in the plane of a magnetic field and anisotropy. And uh, we have a variety of uh, uh, crystal uh, structure of uh, spin textures. And uh, uh, we observe some, uh, <clears throat> uh, here, here is a, a scamionic phase, a triangular lattice of the scamion. And also the square lattice or one dimensional structure of the scamion was uh, derived theoretically by the Monte Carlo simulation. But the uh, uh, important thing is uh, this is a zero temperature calculation. Previously, uh, this A phase appears only in the finite temperature. In the zero temperature, uh, you don't have any scamion states. This is a three-dimensional phase diagram. But if you go to the two-dimension, uh, you could have uh, scamions in the zero temperature limit. And uh, uh, this uh, 2D is uh, very advantageous for the uh, Lorentz TEM uh, trans mission electron microscopy. So this you need a thin film. So the thin film is uh, uh, very good for observation and also for the observation of uh, scamions. So that's why uh, we went to this uh, materials to see the possible scamion uh, crystal. And uh, fortunately, uh, we observed uh, uh, this uh, uh, very beautiful pattern of uh, triangular lattice of the scamion. And here is a, a Monte Carlo uh, simulations. There is a, a clear one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence. So this is a zoom up of a single scamion. But more importantly, in this phase diagram, as I said, uh, you have uh, zero temperature, very low temperature scamion phase. So this is experimental uh, observation and phase diagram. And this is a theoretical calculation. And uh, uh, here, a uh, scamion crystal phase and the helix and the ferromagnet. But uh, very interestingly, here is uh, some uh, uh, point where you observe the isolated scamion is uh, uh, stable. 
also in the uh, simulations. So namely, you don't need a lattice structure to stabilize the skamion. So the single skamion can be uh, stable uh, for uh, as a single particles, right? So <clears throat> another message here is the uh, energy scale of a temperature and magnetic field are quite different uh, because this is a 10 or 30 Kelvin order, but uh, this is a millitesla, right? So this uh, magnetic field energy is much, much smaller than the temperature scale. So this uh, difference is actually quite important uh, for the uh, physics of the skamian because uh, there are two energy scales. So the one is uh, given by the J. So J is a ferromagnetic exchange uh, coupling, which is determined the TC uh, of the order of uh, 30 or 40 Kelvin. But uh, these are jaroszynski moria interaction. And then the D square over J is a typical energy gain due to the twist of a spin. And this energy scale is uh, much smaller than J. So this corresponds to the very large a length scale of a spin texture, namely J over D is uh, bigger than unity. So this means uh, we can apply the slowly bearing continuum approximation. And then, uh, then the mapping uh, from the real space to the uh, sphere S2 uh, becomes a continuum. And then uh, the stability, topological stability enters here. And then the uh, scamion number uh, makes sense. But the uh, energy cost due to the discontinuous spin change is of the order of a J. So uh, that's why this uh, two energy scale hierarchy is uh, quite important for the uh, stability, topological stability of the uh, scamions. And other independent particles, uh, you can talk about the equation motion and the mass and the inertia and the momentum and dissipation, interaction with the spin wave and the Brownian motion and the creation and annihilation, et cetera. So uh, this opens a, a very new field of uh, uh, co non-collinear uh, magnet in this uh, uh, 10 or 20 years. Okay, so the scamion dynamics, for example, is uh, also uh, controlled by the spin berry phase. So if you plug in, the uh, skarmionic uh, configuration, and the only degrees of freedom is a center of mass position, capital R. Then this uh, spin berry phase uh, becomes x, y dot minus y, x dot. So this means the dynamics of a skarmion is uh, quite similar to the charged particles under the magnetic field. So for example, if you have an impurity uh, between center here, then the skarmion is subject to the force. And the velocity is always perpendicular to the force. That leads to the avoiding this, uh, uh, this uh, impurity uh, potential uh, once you uh, derive the uh, scamion. So actually, this is the reason why the scamion is so mobile and uh, uh, threshold current density for the scamion motion is very low compared with uh, domain wall motion, etc. So that's uh, one of the main reasons why the spintronics people are quite interested in the uh, scamions as uh, uh, information carriers. But the basis of this high mobility is uh, coming from this uh, very phase of the spin and the non-collinear uh, spin structure of uh, uh, scamions. And the scamion is associated with a uh, uh, magnetic flux and also the emergent electric field which is coupled to the conduction electrons, uh, J. And then we have always uh, uh, combined dynamics of uh, uh, conduction electrons and uh, uh, spin uh, structures. And uh, this uh, equation can be solved uh, self-consistently, this leading to the various non-trivial uh, electromagnetic phenomena. So for example, if you have a scamion here, then the conduction electron will be deflected uh, because of the emergent magnetic field small b. So this is called a topological hole effect. And uh, uh, the spin transfer torque effect will move, uh, drive the scamion motion, but uh, in some uh, uh, transverse way. 
uh, namely uh, the counteraction of this uh, topological Hall effect leads to the uh, skarmion Hall effect, which goes this way. And the motion of a uh, uh, skarmion will uh, lead to the B dot because the B is moving, right? And then the B dot leads to the small e. So uh, this uh, skarmion Hall effect and the uh, emergent electromagnetic induction is observed uh, in the skarmion systems. So this is a topological Hall effect and the size of the skarmion uh, is uh, related to the flux density and the uh, uh, smaller uh, skarmion leads to the large flux and then the larger uh, Hall response. Namely, this is a topological Hall effect uh, for each materials. And uh, only in this skarmion phase, then you have some additional Hall signal. So this is identified as a, a topological Hall effect coming from the uh, skarmion flux density. So as for the motion, uh, once the skarmion begins to move, then the small e field is a V cross H. H is uh, also the uh, very phase uh, flux, gauge flux. And then this leads to the reduction of a topological Hall effect across the uh, threshold current density like that. So uh, this was our uh, theoretical prediction. And then uh, just after our theory, there appears some uh, German experiment, uh, which clearly shows the reduction of the uh, topological Hall effect uh, uh, above the threshold current density. So uh, this motion of the skarmion leads to the uh, uh, emergent direct field perpendicular to the uh, motion. So another interesting uh, development, recent development is uh, non reciprocal transport in chiral magnets. So this is again the manganese oxide phase diagram. And uh, uh, you can measure uh, they can measure the uh, two omega component of the resistivity. So that is a resistivity which is proportional to the B dot current I. So uh, once you have a uh, current direction, then the, uh, under the magnetic field, the resistivity values differs. So that's called a non reciprocal uh, resistivity. And then this is a gamma value or a two omega component which measures this has a rather large values in this uh, red regions, especially near this uh, TC. So the question is why this happens. So we consider this problem again from the non-collinear uh, spin structure. So the problem is uh, once you have a, a multiple spin, which will scatter the conduction electrons, so what is the uh, effect of the spin-spin correlation? So then uh, we calculate the anti-symmetric probability of uh, conduction electron scattering. So then that is defined by uh, this expression, W minus, and uh, consequently we observe this uh, S cross S correspond to the, uh, this uh, non-reciprocal uh, uh, scattering of the conduction electrons. So this can be understood rather uh, easily in the following way. As I mentioned for the multi-ferric story, so this uh, tilted spin or vector spin chirality leads to the uh, spin current between the two sides, right? So this uh, spin current and the conduction electron current can uh, interact with each other because this is a scatterer. So then uh, this uh, uh, J up and J down will be uh, will scatter with a different uh, probability in the presence of the uh, spin uh, supercurrent uh, between the two spins. So that is the interpretation for uh, this formula. But in any case, uh, we have this uh, expression for the uh, scattering probability and then the, uh, the next job is to calculate the spin uh, vector spin uh, chirality together with uh, uh, spin polarization sigma. 
So for that, we take a simplest approximation, uh, namely the uh, sort of a mode-mode coupling approximation and uh, under the magnetic field uh, and the finite temperature, uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, peak structure of a non-reciprocal uh, transport uh, in this phase diagram, which is uh, quite uh, similar to the experimental observations. So the message here is that uh, vector spin clarity like that leads to uh, the fluctuation of uh, vector spin chirality and then the uh, non reciprocal transport. So this is a sort of a two spin correlation, but the uh, uh, three spin correlation is the original uh, very uh, flux or uh, gauge flux. So then once we have uh, uh, three spins scattering, then it will lead to the uh, small b and also the uh, anomalous hole effect. So uh, this was a, a calculation done by Ishizuka-san uh, three years ago. And uh, we can go to the second boron approximation, then the interference between this uh, single spin scattering and the uh, two spin scattering, the interference between the two process leads to the uh, some uh, uh, so-called skew scattering probability. Skew scattering means uh, from k beta to k alpha and uh, k alpha to k beta, uh, k prime. Sorry, this one should be k prime. So uh, this uh, detailed balance will be uh, violated. And then uh, this uh, skew scattering probability leads to the whole effect in the uh, magnets. So uh, this is one of the uh, known, very well known mechanism for the anomalous hole effect. But uh, uh, the new proposal here is that uh, this uh, uh, spin correlation, scalar spin uh, correlation leads to the uh, sigma xy. So this is a comparison with the experiment in the theory and the Monte Carlo calculation gives uh, this uh, uh, scalar spin chirality uh, for different temperatures. So in the case of uh, uh, low temperature, for us, you have a negative contribution and uh, near TC, we have a positive. So this correspond to this uh, experiment data of uh, 50 Kelvin. But uh, for higher temperature, uh, we have a single peak. So there is a good correspondence between this uh, numerical calculation and the experimental uh, observation in the crystal of a manganese germanite. So yeah, so then uh, this uh, scalar spin chirality uh, plays some important role uh, in this uh, rather conventional chiral magnets, but uh, we can go further. So these uh, materials I just mentioned shows uh, uh, even more interesting uh, magnetic structure, so-called uh, monopole crystal in the low magnetic field regions. So this, uh, uh, again, the Lorentz uh, microscopy. And from this, uh, they propose that uh, magnetic structure contains a hedgehog and anti-hedgehog. So in the uh, language of uh, this uh, very uh, curvature, so this structure corresponds to the monopole and the anti-monopole of uh, flux. Uh, namely, you can calculate the uh, B field around this uh, monopole and anti-monopole. So uh, you have a source and a drain. So then the structure of a small b in this three-dimensional crystal is like that. So you have a source and a, a source and drain of a, a magnetic flux connected by the uh, string. But uh, this string actually corresponds to the three-dimensional string of uh, scamions. Because scamion originally is a two-dimensional object, but uh, for this three-dimensional structure, you have a one-dimensional string of uh, scamion. So if you increase the external magnetic field, so then you can uh, pick up the trajectory of the monopole and anti-monopole and the change of the uh, B flux. So the red region is a positive B, and the blue is a negative B. So then eventually this monopole and anti-monopole 
will annihilate in the pairwise. So this is annihilation point of a monopole and anti-monopole as a function of the magnetic field of a uniform magnetization. So around this critical point, very small value of a, a magnetic field will change the uh, right uh, this uh, distance uh, between the uh, monopole positions. So then this is a sort of a critical phenomena. And uh, because uh, beyond this point, you don't have any monopole or anti-monopole. So that's why we regard this as a topological phase transition driven by the external magnetic field. And uh, experimentally, uh, there is some signature of uh, magneto resistance. So here is uh, some peak structure, which almost correspond to the annihilation of the monopole and the anti-monopole. Then uh, we try theoretically, uh, this is again the repetition of uh, gauge field uh, scattering uh, because the story is quite similar. So because you have a non-collinear or a non coplanar spin structure in the background, so it's a fluctuation will lead to the fluctuation of the small a. So then this small a will scatter the conduction electrons to give a uh, resistivity. So, but in the case of uh, uh, this uh, chiral magnet, the fluctuation is not the Maxwellian uh, gauge field, but the uh, uh, spin wave is uh, uh, origin of this small a fluctuation. So this uh, spin wave is uh, given by this spectrum. So under the zero magnetic field, uh, we have uh, 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 no, right, uh, we don't have, uh, sorry, we don't have a, a, this a very phase given here because you don't have a, a small B field here. So then you have a, a K linear dispersion given by this. But under the magnetic field, uh, this uh, uh, B field becomes finite. And then the uh, spectrum will be split into the gap spin wave and the uh, uh, K square dispersions, uh, scamion phonons, scamion crystal phonons. So take into account this fluctuation and uh, plug in this uh, small a fluctuation. Then we can calculate the resistivity uh, given by this as a function of the MZ. So we think uh, there is a, a good agreement between the experimental curve and uh, uh, this theoretical calculation. So one thing is uh, near this uh, monopole, anti-monopole annihilation point, uh, you have a rather sharp peak. And the other is uh, there is some shoulder, uh, something like that. And if you compare the uh, longitudinal and the transverse to the external magnetic field, so this uh, longitudinal one has a bigger resistivity, which is also consistent with this experimental observation. So yeah, so in chiral magnet, uh, so this uh, gauge field fluctuation seems to appear in uh, the magneto resistance, even though it is not a spin liquid and the conventional uh, magnetically ordered state, but still it's a fluctuation is non-collinear and associated with a uh, uh, gauge field. But uh, this uh, non-collinear structure can be discussed also in the momentum space. So uh, this is a momentum space uh, very phase, and uh, probably many of you already know about this, but the main point here is that this uh, interband uh, matrix element of the current operator uh, is related to the uh, K derivative of a wave function and the uh, uh, very curvature. And this uh, very curvature leads to the uh, anomalous velocity. And uh, this anomalous velocity leads to the uh, polarization current and quantum hole current. So uh, this current is a geometric origin and uh, even without this uh, Fermi surface, this uh, polarization current and the quantum hole current can be finite. But uh, this U1 uh, very phase uh, canceled to be zero once you have both the time reversal and the inversion symmetry. But on the other hand, if you break one of these, then the very phase becomes uh, finite. And uh, this very phase is related to the intracell coordinates because uh, this uh, K derivative is uh, promoted to the gauge covariant derivative. 
and uh, this uh, uh, small a is nothing but the k a space very phase of a block wave function and uh, this leads to the non commutative uh, x and y coordinates and then the anomalous velocity results so <clears throat> uh, this is a k space uh, story uh, in the for example in the uh, ferromagnetic band structure you have uh, often have a band crossing between the up and the down band but in the presence of the spin orbit interaction so here occurs some anti crossing and as a function of the, some uh, coordinates kg so you have uh, uh, this hybridization gap due to the uh, spin orbit interaction but uh, this uh, spin orbit interaction can be a uh, vanishing uh, at some uh, tuning parameter kg so then uh, this corresponds to the uh, monopole of uh, k space very phase so this is given by uh, this wire fermion and in other words uh, this represents a non-collinear uh, spin structure in momentum uh, space so the very flux is uh, uh, originating from the band crossing point so uh, this becomes a source of uh, uh, anomalous velocity and uh, uh, anomalous fall effect. And uh, if I generalize this idea to the uh, Kramer's doublet, where this uh, double degeneracy is there, then the uh, gauge field becomes uh, SU2. And the band degeneracy, or uh, this uh, top of the uh, balance band, leads to the uh, young monopole. And this leads to the spin dependent, uh, very uh, anomalous velocity, and leads to the uh, spin hole effect. So this is all story, but uh, uh, this one has developed, has been developed by uh, many people to the quantized anomalous hole effect and the quantum spin hole effect and the topological insulators and also uh, wires and metals. So from my viewpoint, all the, those uh, uh, originated from the ideas developed for uh, high TC uh, theories or quantum hole systems. But uh, uh, I want to talk about some uh, interesting uh, story about the summer hole effect uh, conductivity uh, together with uh, Patrick uh, in 10 years ago. And then <clears throat> the idea is that uh, even though the uh, magnons or uh, spinons, whatever, is a neutral object. But the very phase can be acting also on the neutral particles. So then the uh, very curvature is, leads to the kappa xy in uh, magnets. So explicit uh, model is a Kagome uh, anti uh, Kagome ferromagnet. And then uh, we can uh, calculate the very curvature and the uh, uh, kappa xy coming from this. But uh, uh, experimentally, uh, the most uh, simplest case is uh, uh, this uh, pyrogra uh, ferromagnet again. And uh, in these materials, uh, the ferromagnet uh, moment is uh, uh, disturbed by the spin wave, right? At finite temperature. And this propagation of this uh, spin wave is uh, uh, influenced by the jaroszynski moria interaction. And this uh, jaroszynski moria interaction is uh, nothing but the flux for the propagation of a magnum. And this leads to the uh, band structure because this contains a uh, multiple magnetic ions in the unit cell. Then you have a uh, multiple band structure and acquire the very phase. And then the kappa xy can be calculated and then uh, we have a very good agreement between the uh, theory and the experiment, including the uh, order of magnitude quantitatively. So then the, uh, this magnum is also influenced by the very uh, curvature in momentum space. But uh, uh, with the last five or seven minutes, I want to uh, talk about the nonlinear uh, optics. So this one is a uh, uh, very rather recent development in the field of uh, uh, photovoltaic effect. Because usually 
this uh, photovoltaic effect uh, requires some uh, spatial structure such as a PN junction. But uh, even without the PN junction, uh, just uh, a crystal uh, will show the bulk photovoltaic effect in non-central symmetric crystal. So this is one example of a, a perovskite uh, oxide. And then uh, this is a ferroelectric materials. And if you reverse the uh, direction of the electric polarization, the spontaneous uh, current, DC current produced by the light irradiation uh, change the directions like that. So there is a one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence between the polarization and uh, uh, this uh, photo current. So this uh, uh, was analyzed uh, by uh, LAPS group in 2012. And uh, they did the first principle uh, band structure calculation and calculate all the uh, matrix element and <clears throat> the Berry connection. So because the Berry connection has the meaning of uh, intracell coordinates. So once you have an uh, interband transition between the N prime and N double prime, then there is a shift of uh, center of mass motion, center of mass of uh, uh, electronic wave packet. So that will accumulate to have a DC uh, current. Uh, this omega is the incident, right? But the omega minus omega leads to the DC current. So this is called a, a shift current mechanism of the nonlinear optics. So this is a, a comparison between the theory and the experiment for the barium titanate. So actually we formulated this problem in a slightly different way. Uh, making use of a uh, rocket formalism and the uh, Keldish formalism. And then uh, to make the story short, then let me uh, mention the uh, following. So the rocket bands are shifted by the optical frequency. And then you can talk about this uh, rocket bands. But uh, because of the electric field, here appears some uh, anti crossing here due to the hybridization. And then this uh, rocket band structure can produce the uh, DC current uh, from the uh, very phase again. So then we can talk about the very phase of this rocket bands. And the other advantage of this formalism is that uh, we can take into account uh, all order with respect to the electric field. So then we can talk about the competition between the relaxation gamma and the strength of the electric field. So this is a cartoon for the uh, shift current. Once you have a transition, then there is a shift of uh, a wave packet. So this leads to the DC current. So <clears throat> this is uh, somehow similar to the uh, anomalous hole current or a spin hole current. And then seems to be very robust against the disorder and localization, et cetera. So uh, this is not the usual transport current, but something uh, more like a, a polarization current. But the uh, important point is uh, by the photo excitations, you could have a DC current. Uh, usual polarization current cannot be DC. So uh, this uh, electric field dependence can be shown here experimentally. And uh, this uh, curve is a uh, fitting from our theoretical formula. And uh, there is a very uh, nice agreement. So this is considered as a, uh, one of the uh, evidence for the shift current mechanism. And also uh, the first principle calculation uh, done by uh, Yan Zhang uh, is quite consistent with uh, experimental uh, observation. So for this uh, federal uh, electric semiconductor, so this uh, shift current mechanism uh, seems to be definitely uh, acting. So another advantage of this uh, Keldish formalism is that we taking account the electron correlation, and then uh, we can talk about the exciton formation and uh, concluded that even the uh, exciton can carry the DC shift current. So this is quite contrary to the conventional uh, photoconductivity because the exciton is a neutral, but uh, uh, we have a uh, exciton shift current. 
And also,、uh, as I、uh, mentioned, in the multi ferric materials,、uh, we have a so called、uh, electromagnon. So, this electromagnon is associated with the polarization, but、uh, also、uh, shift current. So, then if you excite the、uh, uh, electromagnon at some uh, uh, small energy regions compared with uh, uh, electronic transition, still the DC current will be produced. So, these are、uh, insulating uh, systems, exton and electromagnon, in low energy region. Can also support the DC、uh, shift current. So, in the last、uh, two or three minutes, let me briefly mention about our recent、uh, results on the、uh, low frequency、uh, divergence of, and quantum geometry of the bulk photovoltaic effect in topological s e m i m e t a l s So,、uh, this、uh, Yun Yang is now at Harvard. Uh, under the、uh, supervision of uh, uh, Ashwin. But uh, uh, more recently,、uh, we try to connect all the nonlinear and、uh, linear optical conductivity to the Riemannian geometry. So, this is already、uh, put it on the condom mat. So, the idea is、uh, these are、uh, block bands with the、uh, number n, n is the number of bands, can be regarded. As、uh, some manifold. And uh, uh, this uh, transition dipole moment is、uh, regarded as a tangent vector、uh, for this manifold. Then uh, this uh, matrix can be de、uh, defined as the inner product of uh, uh, this unit vector and the connection and the curvature. So these are all related to the、uh, optical、uh, conductivity. So, <clears throat> namely, uh, this uh, uh, dipole matrix element is nothing but a matrix very、uh, phase. And uh, uh, this transition matrix is nothing but uh, uh, tangential, uh, base of the tangential、uh, space. And、uh, you can define the matrix by this inner product. And if you take a derivative, then you can define the curvature,、uh, sorry, connection. And the、uh, uh, second derivative gives a、uh, curvature. So all those will appear in this linear and nonlinear optical conductivity. So this、uh, linear optical conductivity is uh, uh, just a metric tensor. And the、uh, second order injection current is a product of、uh, this metric. And、uh, this is a, a group velocity of the band M and band N. And the、uh, shoot current is given by this、uh, connection C. And the、uh, uh, third order injection current is、uh, given by the Riemannian curvature、uh, and other terms. And actually,、uh, this uh, Riemannian term,、uh, curvature term, is dominant near the bandage of uh, this uh, topological uh, materials. For example, you have this uh, uh, massive Dirac fermion in 2D, this、uh, K term. Is the、uh, most dominant near the edge. And uh, uh, actually, this is the first principle calculation for German N. And then uh, this uh, model calculation is、uh, quite similar to this realistic calculation. And also,、uh, it is true for、uh, three dimensional materials. Okay, so I think I, I, I have no time.、Uh, my time is up. And、uh, let me、uh, thank the、uh, collaborator for many years.、Uh, first of all, I would like to thank、uh, Patrick and Xiao Gang at MIT. And、uh, uh, Yu Tokyo,、uh, Morimoto san is my colleague. s And、uh, Xiao Xiao Zhang is uh, my uh, colleague s here. Uh, also, uh, Murakami san and、uh, Ishizuka san, and Jun Yang and、uh, Ashbin and、uh, Gang Yu Guo. And、uh, late Professor Su Chan Zhang. And、uh, I have、uh, many experimental co colleagues uh, uh, working together. And、uh, I have so many collaborators. So that's why I couldn't、uh, list all of them, but、uh, thank many others. So here is a summary. So let me stop here. Thank you very much.、Uh, yeah.
Uh, thanks, Nato, for a very great talk. So now let's move to the question session. Uh, does anyone have a question? Patrick, I think you're muted. Ah. Oh, I'm muted. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so let me start again. Yeah, that, that was an amazing uh, survey, an uh, amazing body of work. Now, so, uh, I just have a simple question. When, when you spoke about the uh, spin current, it, the analog of the Josephson. Uh, uh, yes. Is there a spin accumulation? Is there a physical current? And then it, uh, a... Yeah, probably not. Uh, actually, these are sort of uh, analog, but uh, there is no spin accumulation associated with uh, this uh, super spin current. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Jan Zane wrote a paper uh, to separate the uh, super spin current into the two classes. One is associated with accumulation and the other is not. And uh, this uh, super, super uh, spin current is not associated with uh, spin accumulation. I see. Can you explain why? So there's the there's the uh, spin current in the ground state, right? It's yes. Ground state. Yeah. These are sort of a persistent uh, persistent spin current. So in what the ground state. To the spin, what happens to the spin when they hit the boundary? Yeah, of course. Uh, because of the spin orbit interaction, the spin current is not conserved. Okay. So. Then even though we have a spin current, uh, there is no no contradiction in that sense. Okay. But yeah, but uh, have, yeah. Can you have such an effect without spin orbit? Ah. Uh, I see. Yeah, Just uh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Of course, uh, we have a. Uh, uh, exchange restriction. Uh, there is some another uh, mechanism which does not include the uh, spin orbit interaction as a mechanism of uh, multi uh, due to the uh, so called uh, uh, spin exchange interaction. Yeah, so yeah, there are some conventional uh, multi mechanism. Okay. So uh, yeah, uh, that does not require any spin orbit interaction. Yeah, that is true. In that case, is there a spin accumulation? No, 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 no. It is not associated with a spin current. The usual oh. exchange type, oh. S dot S times uh, some polarization. Okay. Okay. Of course, you need to break uh, uh, symmetry, inversion symmetry, and also the uh, time reversal symmetry. And uh, you need some special arrangement of the atomic configurations. So, yeah, it depends on the uh, crystal symmetry and so on. But uh, this uh, spin current mechanism does not require any uh, inversion symmetry yes. of a crystal. So uh, simply once the spin rotates, then yes. always you have a polarization once it is a cycloidal. Okay, so um, I would I I would like to ask you uh, about your opinion about the high TC. You know, in this series uh, of uh, of lectures, we have seen many on on high temperature superconductivity, uh, and there is a, a big di big uh, division. Uh, every experimentalist starts his talk by claiming that the high TC problem has not been solved. Therefore. Uh, uh, new experiments are needed. Every theorist was starting their talk by claiming that high TC problem has been solved, uh, except everyone had a different solution. So uh, where do you stand? What, how do you see it? What's your opinion? Yeah, actually I hesitated to show the next slide, but uh, let me show. So high TC theory is a sort of a dinosaur, but uh, <laughs> it will turn into birds. <laughs> So I'm talking about birds. <laughs> but uh, 
but uh, definitely make some uh, developments in the conventional materials. But I think uh, this uh, impact of the high tea theory is so rich and extending almost all over the condensed matter theory, I think. So this, yeah, from my viewpoint, right? Yeah, without this uh, high TC, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, geometry and uh, gauge field and so on, this uh, idea didn't appear, I think. So that's why I, 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 I believe that it is so fruitful eventually. Even though this uh, original ITC <laughs> problem uh, cannot be completely solved, but uh, it is so rich. Thanks. Can I maybe ask a question? Ah, Tanya. Uh, for uh, many phenomena like linear response function and so on, uh, uh, there are uh, very general uh, 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 relations like dispersal relation, Kramer, chronic, some rules, and so on. I yeah. just wonder for uh, some of the phenomena which you consider, are there any such general uh, rules, so to say, general uh, uh, some, some rules and so on? In particular, for example, for uh, multiferroics, uh, like for epsilon and for uh, mu, we know that there is Kramer chronic, but what about, say, uh, alpha? which is uh, kind of a magnetoelectric tensor. Mm -hmm. and some other phenomena which you consider. Uh, are there any such general uh, restrictions or general some rules? Uh, yeah, some rule. Yeah, some rules. Some like yeah. Something like dispersion relations in uh, field mm -hmm. theory and some, something like that. Are these two notions relevant somehow just uh, or maybe they are not applicable really to uh, things you consider. Yeah, actually in the case of a linear response theorem, uh, linear response theory. So all this uh, some rule has been explored already, I think. But uh, it is a highly non-trivial uh, question to generalize it into the non-linear response functions. But uh, there is some uh, uh, discussion about the Kramas chronic into the nonlinear optical conductivity. But uh, some uh, omega is uh, restricted to each other. Yeah, you cannot make a, a generic Kramas chronic into the uh, generic omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, et cetera, uh, nonlinear response function. But uh, there is. So actually what we discuss is always the DC response due to the finite frequency excitation. So omega and minus omega leads to the DC response. So that is, uh, uh, that is a uh, shift current. And also in the last part, uh, this uh, omega minus omega and zero frequency electric field leads to the whole response. So we need to specify the frequency in appropriately. So then we can have some uh, uh, geometric interpretation. Okay, very good, thanks. Uh, hi, Nato, I, I have a question. So are you sure there is a Lattice of monopole and anti monopole in three dimensions. So, my question is yeah. Is it possible to have a lattice of monopole itself so without anti monopole? Yeah, I think it's impossible. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think very similar to the Nielsen Ninomia theorem. Okay, thanks. Uh, is there any other question? Yeah, because uh, we have a Dirac string. So in the usual monopole and anti-monopole, the Dirac mm -hmm. string is uh, fictitious, right? But yeah, uh, yeah. in our case, so this uh, Dirac string is nothing but a Scamion string. Yeah. So there is some real spin structure connecting the uh, monopole and anti-monopole. 
Then once you have a monopole, then this uh, 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 scamion string will should end at some point where mm -hmm. you have an anti-monopole. So that's why they always appear in pairs. Yeah, I see, sucks. Maybe I have a naive question, uh, Professor Nagaosa. Yes. I wonder whether some of the phenomena you described are intrinsic to uh, two plus one, two dimensional space, one dimensional time phenomena only, or are there some other phenomena? No, 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 no. Yeah, some of them are 3D, oh, yeah, 3D yeah. plus 1D. But, uh, uh, but uh, most of my talk is uh, rather classical. For example, in this uh, scamion, uh, there are so many spins involved, right? So that's why you can uh, observe this object and its motion. So this motion is also classical, almost. So there is uh, almost no feature of uh, quantum mechanics there. But uh, once it moves, then it will create the uh, emergent electric field or magnetic field, uh, which will affect the quantum mechanical motion of uh, conduction electrons. So uh, in that sense, uh, this is a classical analog of uh, so-called <laughs> uh, uh, quantum spin systems, right? So, so that's why you can control and also look at in a very well-defined way. So once the quantum mechanics becomes uh, quite relevant, then apparently it becomes uh, rather uniform, right? So then the problem becomes uh, difficult, but uh, once you have a classical dynamics, then you, you can really see. And uh, in most of the applications, you really need uh, some classical degrees of freedom. So uh, that's why, yeah, it, it is uh, uh, some approach from the other limit. In high TC, you are really interested in the quantum effect, but uh, we have always some uh, classical analog of this quantum effect. So that can be easier to tackle. So that is the basic idea. Thanks. Uh, is there another question? Okay, uh, I guess it's already very late from Professor Nagosa. So okay, thank you very yeah, much. Let's thank okay, Professor Nagosa. Okay, and let's thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much.